Welcome to Hamilton. Beautiful sunset. Yes, it's getting late in the regular season. Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Hamilton Tiger Cats meeting for the second time this season. Two teams that had horrible starts to the regular season, but really turned it around. They're the two hottest teams going right now, Dwayne Ford. Interesting as well, the quarterback situation. Bo Levi Mitchell and Zach Kalaros, the two most successful quarterbacks of the past decade, and head-to-head -head now, it's really interesting to see what they're going to have in store tonight. Yeah, well, exciting to see these two guys go head-to-head -head late in the season in such a meaningful game. For both of these football teams, you think Zach Kolaris, two-time MVP, and last week sets a career high with six touchdown passes in that ball game. And Bo Levi Mitchell, everybody loves a great comeback story, right? And his has been absolutely phenomenal just within this 2024 season. Scott Milanovic's Thai Cats have been living on the edge for over a month. They've won four straight, the last two dramatically, and they are still on the outside looking in. I mean, it is. Mike O'Shea with the Bombers winning seven straight. They're in the playoffs for an eighth straight year. Another win, they'll clinch at least a home game. But for the Ticats, they're not mathematically eliminated if they lose. But it's been that way for the past month where they're essentially treating it like a must-win game coming into this one. Four points behind the Argos for third in the East. The Bombers won the toss and they want the ball to start. Ex-Bomber Mark Leggio kicks off Friday Night Football from the hammer. It's Lucky Whitehead with it. He slips and gets it across the 30. There was rain here earlier in Hamilton, let off about an hour ago. Zach Kolaris, Dwayne, as you mentioned, what a game. His best this season last week against Edmonton. Well, you think for so much of this season, the talk surrounding Zach Kolaris has been around that touchdown to interception ratio. Well, for the first time all year, after that performance, he now has more touchdown passes and interceptions and is just picking up steam at the right time of year. And he's got Brady Oliveira in the backfield. Oliveira had another great game last week. A receiving touchdown against the Edmonton Elks. And it's a first and ten. And it's in Oliveira's hands left side across the 35. Another good pickup by the leading rusher in the Canadian Football League, Brady Oliveira. And this Winnipeg offense has a line led by one of the all-time great Stanley Bryant at the left tackle spot. Terrific veteran. And Kenny Lawler. Talk about veteran guys getting hot at just the right time. Lawler outstanding. Last week, eight catches for 130. Many of them of the highlight reel variety. I was going to say at least half of them. Just off the charts, a one-hander. Somehow stayed in a... Inbounds for a touchdown and another one. He had a couple of TDs last week. It's a second and short. No problem for Oliveira. Takes a pop from Stavros Katsatonis. Gets it up around the 45. And a first down for Winnipeg. Well, defensively for Hamilton. Tim Ward makes his debut here in the Canadian Football League. He's in for Nick Usher at the defensive end spot. Kyle Wilson continues to be one of the most productive defensive players in the Canadian Football League from his weak side linebacker spot. A terrific first year for boundary halfback Justin Talbot. Bombers haven't lost since late July. Ticats haven't lost since six weeks ago against Winnipeg on that first down toss. It is complete. It's Kevin's Clarcius, the Bomber rookie, catching it, and he gets it up near midfield. Another second and short is coming up. Now we'll take a look at the protection from this Winnipeg offensive line to open this game. Clean pocket for Zach. You see Clarcius just hooking it up over the middle. Meeting with a couple of terrific rookies. He and Ty Cats middle linebacker Ryan Baker. During this seven-game winning streak by Winnipeg, they have scored first every time. Up near midfield now. And getting the first down. Oh, down inside the 45, running hard, Brady Oliveira. So a good start for the Bomber offense. They had an excellent start, leading to a touchdown against Edmonton last week. Nice job up front by that Bombers offensive line and Brady Oliveira fighting through contact for a couple extra yards at the end of this. Oliveira had 18 carries for 120 yards when these teams met in Winnipeg a few weeks ago. He had 88 rushing and 33 receiving. 
On that one catch for a touchdown. A little toss to Nick Dembski on the first down. And his footing. Just a little slippery down there as he cuts it back inside, inside the 40. And another good pickup on first down. Third straight time. It'll come down to a second and short. A well, solid start here for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers offense. Primarily on the ground, just mixing in a little bit of the aerial game, but had success against Hamilton running the football, as I mentioned, in Winnipeg. So they're going to continue in that vein until the Ticats demonstrate that they can stop it. Back coming in, the fullback, Michael Chris Ike, and the sixth offensive lineman, Tui Eli. On the second and two, down to the Hamilton 36, opening possession. First game of week 18, and flags coming out before Procedure. the snap of the ball. Winnipeg, number 67, five-yard penalty, remains second down. So this second and short will become a second and long now, as announced by the referee, Justin McInnes. Both teams changing up personnel as a result. That down and distance adjustment going back to their base formations. That penalty pushes them back to the Hamilton 41 in a second and seven. Polaris looking to pass under pressure and down he goes. Big defensive play by the Ticats. Brandon Barlow in his fifth sack of the season. And timely, too, to push Winnipeg further back. All the way back to the 47. Barlow, the rush end, gets in that three point stance. Ends up working against the guard in this instance. Pretty good job by Dobson on that one, but just always a challenge for the offensive line. Your back is to the football when your quarterback's in the pocket. You're not sure exactly where he is. Claris had stepped up a little bit on that one to within the grasp of former Toronto Argonaut Brandon Barlow. And the previous two years with the Argos and then moved over to Hamilton as a free agent. And in his second game with the Ticats, he had three sacks against Saskatchewan and then had a dry spell. Picked up another one a couple of weeks ago and then number five on the season now. Injured player for Winnipeg down. That's Patrick Newfeld, the right guard. Keep an eye here on number 53, Patty Newfeld. Mikey just got his leg rolled up on at the end here. So Zach Kalaris knocked into Newfeld's right leg. Mentioning the sixth offensive lineman is Tui Eli. Newfeld, one of the staples on that offensive line along with Stanley Bryant. They've undergone some change over the last couple of seasons. So it's Jamison Sheehan in and standing inside the 50 of Winnipeg to punt this one away. So a penalty and a sack put them out of scoring range. And it's Tim White to take it at the Ticat 10 after a 37 yard punt trying to get the Ticats forced deep in their zone. Bowley by Mitchell completed 29 of his last have been in recent years. They have not won in Hamilton since 2017. Remarkable in that 15 to 3 or 15 3 year in 2022. They lost badly to the Ticats. Why do you think that is, right? I don't know. And I, <laughs> I, I have a feeling that's their answer. As yeah, well. exactly. Trying to figure it out. Two hot teams this time. Here's Bo Levi Mitchell. He's looking deep right away. And it's Keandre Smith covered by Dietrich Nichols. Nichols was right there, step for step. It falls incomplete. Yeah, Dietrich Nichols, one of the best in the business. And that boundary halfback spot. Hamilton comes out looking deep right away. Keandre Smith. Coming across the field down the pipe. Nichols. There to lock him down. So airing it out on that first and ten. Second down now. Mitchell has time. Pump big. Now he chooses to take off. Just couldn't find anything available there. It was 15 carries for 122 yards all season long coming into this night. That 
that one only gets a couple of yards. So Nick Constantino will come and punt it away, and he'll be standing deep in his own zone. Yeah, Winnipeg with a good drive to start this one off. Looks like they're poised to take immediate control in the, the field position game here. High snap pulled down by Constantino for Lucky Whitehead. It bounces just past midfield. It rolls back and Whitehead falls on it right near Ray Wilborn. So an obvious no yards penalty there against Hamilton after a punt of just 35 yards. So a good place to start again for Caleros. Explosion against the Edmonton Oaks last week right out of the gate six touchdown passes no picks for Zach Kolaris yeah, an outstanding performance from Zach Kolaris and it was a Number of receivers doing the damage, but especially the veterans Four of those touchdown passes split between Kenny Lawler and Nick Dembski Both those guys over a hundred yards in the ballgame with the penalty. They have a great place to start the 41 a Hamilton near Intercepted. Oh, what a chance there for Jonathan Moxie of Zach Kolaros. Got bobbled even up in the air. Stavros Katz and Tonis in and around the ball either, but nearly a turnover for the Thai Cats. Yeah, and you'll see a couple of Cats have a shot at this. Moxie starts off at the right edge of your screen. You see the three of them converging to the football. Moxie, middle linebacker Ryan Baker at safety. Stavros Katz and Tonis. Each thinking he might have had a shot at that football. Intended for Kevin Sclerasius. So it's a second and ten now for Winnipeg. With a four-man rush. He gets rid of it to the right. And that is caught for a first down. Yes, Kenny Lawler, who had that big game last week with eight catches for 130 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Uh, this is where we talk about the margin of error being so small against a good team. Cats had an opportunity to get a turnover on the last play. They missed that. The Bombers make no mistake when given a second chance. Faking the handoff, looking to the end zone, wide open! Touchdown! Clercius, right back to him. And the rookie can celebrate his first CFL touchdown. Well, no question. CFL touchdown number one for Kevin Clercius is one that he'll remember. Zach Kolaris airs it up. Thersius goes and gets it. Great lunging catch in the corner of the end zone. He's got his own touchdown move now. It's not It's not the chicken box of Brady <laughs> Oliveira. That'll, he gets to work on that now. And he picks up TD number one, Clarisius. High draft pick for the Bombers out of Connecticut. The Canadian kid celebrating a Canadian Football League touchdown with a point after try from Sergio Castillo. So they were already winning the field possession game. Short field to work with. Clarcius will remember that. TD. In this instance, take advantage of some confusion from the Hamilton defense. There you see Kevin Clarcius lined up as the number one receiver. The guy who's got to cover him is the field corner. Way over on the right side of your screen is Will Sunderland. Obviously some confusion for Hamilton whether they thought the wrong side of the field was strength with Sunderland running over from the other side. He's late getting there, never really gets settled. Clara spots it right away and takes advantage. The strike to Clarcius. Palmer took him 13th overall in round two of this year's CFL draft. So that kickoff is heading out of bounds and a flag. It comes out Lawrence Woods there for the return, but a shorter kickoff by Winnipeg, and this will help the Thai Cats cause down seven points. Legal kick out of bounds. Winnipeg. First down, Hamilton. Better place to start for Bo Levi Mitchell. Well, we saw moments ago what Winnipeg was able to do with a short field. Tiger Cats won't be in Winnipeg territory here, but a pretty good starting point. For their second possession of the ball game. So they're they had one spot picked out at the 40 and now moving the sticks way up to the 50 yard line with the penalty now. And a first and ten. Ty catch fell behind. 
16 nothing in Vancouver last week came back and won it in overtime. Down seven here early off to the right and it's caught by the big tight end Giovanni Robinson Evan Holm. Smaller player but hangs on for the ride with Robinson and takes him down. Yeah, as we take a look at the rest of this Hamilton Tiger Cat offense Brendan Bordner continues to start at the left tackle spot the rookie providing stability there in recent games in the receiving core former bomber Brendan O'Leary Orange figured large in the outcome in BC last week former bomber came to Hamilton as a free agent this past offseason also James Butler in for Greg Bell at running back this week. Gain of two Mitchell on that second and long and no a chance for Stephen Dunbar but a, a flag does come out with that pass by Mitchell. Legal contact, Legal contact, Winnipeg, 41. 10-yard penalty, first down. Getting the linebacker, Brian Cole, on that illegal contact, so a first down as they move into Bomber territory. Keep an eye here on the weak side linebacker, Brian Cole. Brendan O'Leary Orange is going to run a crossing route underneath. He'll be coming from the bottom of your screen towards the top. There you see the reaction of the linebacker. Definitely contact deemed to be illegal. And so down to the Winnipeg 48 and a first and 10 and Mitchell handing off to James Butler and slips as he was also hit hard by Jamal Woods stopped in his tracks second down. Well, Jamal Woods one of the newcomers to this Winnipeg defense this season did a great job tracking this he's coming from the backside and loops around sees the flow of the play and runs to get out in front of it meet James Butler in the hole outstanding effort second and nine that one yard pickup by Butler just a three man rush Mitchell has time he completes it to DeAndre Smith getting away from Cole and down around the 35 more than enough for a first down as the sticks will move again for Hamilton uh, aided by a couple of penalties here the Hamilton Tiger Cats Mounting a solid drive of their own in response to the Kevin's Clercius touchdown. Keandre Smith in his third season with the Cats. Approaching 800 yards on the year in terms of receiving yardage. Great game last week. BC, eight catches, 92 yards and a touchdown. From the Winnipeg 36 now. Mitchell, again, lots of time. And a beautiful catch by Smith. With Terrell Ford right there with them, but back to back first down catches for Keandre Smith. Tight end formation for Hamilton. You can see the protection that they get. Allowed the second fewest sacks in the league. Leaping effort there from Keandre Smith. How about that receiver class in 2022 with the Phil Pot twins, Samuel Emelis, Keandre Smith? All doing well now. Great class. And a nice response drive here. Here's Butler with a big hole and a Hamilton touchdown. James Butler can walk right through it and sail into the end zone untouched. And his second rushing touchdown of the season. Yeah, the tie cats crack the left side wide open here. Great seal there, kick out there. Not hard for James Butler to find the running lane into the end zone. Not even just untouched, but nobody even close to him Not as close. he takes that one to the house. It really was, and Butler back in. They've gone back and forth with him and Greg Bell. Bell hurt again. <laughs> Point after for Mark Leggio against his old team, James Butler. Sails right through against that Winnipeg defense. We got a 7 7 game late first quarter. 
Ty Kepps kept winning. It was well, Bo, promptly come to the stadium with your overalls and your drink. And obviously you see him with his two daughters coming in with their drinks as well. And it also wouldn't shock anybody to know that Bo Levi Mitchell, who wore the, his headband so long for Calgary Stampeders, was put up to that by Derek Dennis. And when I asked Bo Levi Mitchell about all of it, he quoted the Ty Cats philosopher and offensive lineman Brendan Revenberg and said, I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. But I think this shows us guys that when the offensive lineman tells you to do something when the team's winning, you do it. Uh, Matthew, I love Scott Milanovic's reaction to it as well when you talk to him about it. Whatever is working right now, just keep doing it. I'm not going to mess with the, the karma of overalls. By the way, Kate no looking very sharp. Absolutely. Overalls. Pulling it off. <laughs> Bo Levi Mitchell starting a little trend here in Hamilton and, and no one's going to argue with it right now. I think you'd look sharp in a pair Thank of you. overalls, Roger. I, I had denim overalls in high school. I did. That was, that was many, many decades ago. Don't know how I'd be in them now. 7-7 seven, seven the score and a first down. And back to Brady Oliveira across the 35. He'll get his touches. Great balance of running and throwing the football. We saw that on his full display last week in a big victory by the Bombers at home against Edmonton. Outstanding effort, as you alluded to earlier, on his touchdown catch and run. Just a tremendous all around effort from the Bombers in the win over Winnipeg last week. And that effort on his one catch of the night that led to a touchdown too, 33 yards, second and six. And there you go. He's catching them, and he's picking up a first down there. He doesn't get a lot of receptions, but Oliveira gets that across the Winnipeg 50, and a first down as this drive continues, a pickup of 15 yards. And the poise of the veteran, Zach Kolaris, in the pocket. Eyes downfield as he drifts to his right to buy a little bit of time. Away from that pressure finds Brady Oliveira who does the rest. Last year's leading rusher in the CFL, he leads the way in 2024 again. Polaris to throw this time. And wide open complete. That's caught down inside the 35, and that's Ontario Wilson. First year CFL player, one of the top rookie receivers in the league. And Ontario Wilson lined up out wide on this one. Keep an eye as well at the line of scrimmage with the run fake, how it forces the linebackers to stay tight to the line, just holds them for a split second. They don't get that depth. Ontario Wilson curls in behind the middle linebacker, Ryan Baker. Zach Kolaris drops it in there perfectly. Ontario Wilson out of Florida State, Ryan Baker. Wilson's first catch of the night. And there's Nick Stepke's first catch. That short one, and then upended as he just gets it down to the 25, just shy of a first down. Jonathan Moxie amongst those who are in on the takedown of the Winnipeg receiver. Quick hitter here to Dembski, looking to let the former University of Manitoba star demonstrate his after the catch skills. Sunderland goes low, Moxie goes high. And the short yardage package is in with backup quarterback Terry Wilson now. They need a couple of yards here on this second down. Wilson keeps it and gets it. Assuming the role that used to be held by Chris Trebler until his knee injury in the Banjo Bowl ended his season. Through his first pass last week against Edmonton, playing sparingly in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and it's interesting to see Wilson having had this role for, for a couple of games now as the short yardage quarterback. Strebler is just so unique that you're able to build a package of run plays around him. I'm not sure that Wilson necessarily offers that same skill set. So it's a chunk missing from the, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers playbook at this stage in the season. At the Hamilton 22, here comes Winnipeg again at a tie game. Oliveira tries to turn it up after going right. And there's not much there. He doesn't even make it down to the 20, so talking at most two yards there in a second and long coming up for Buck Pierce in that Winnipeg offense. 
Now Buck Pierce. Of course, a great quarterback in this league. You think about a quarterback room when you look at coaching staffs around the league that included Dave Dickinson, Buck Pierce, Jarius Jackson. And Chris Jones. Run of the defense for the Tie Cats. They're coming over from Edmonton. Here's Kolaris with some time. He buys it. Tries to take off. Couldn't find a receiver and reaching across inside the 15, but it still won't be enough. Third down coming up, and I would assume we'll see Sergio Castillo coming out now. Castillo makes his way out. You know, we should note we end up talking about the win so often in games in Hamilton. Seems pretty dead tonight. No real impact. So Winnipeg won the coin toss in this game. Usually we see teams defer in Hamilton so that they can choose when they want to have the win in that second half. But Winnipeg chose to take the football out of the gate in this one. Jamison Sheehan is to put it down at the 22 of Hamilton and Castillo. Who was two for two last week against Edmonton, one for one in this game tonight. And the Bombers have the lead again on that the last play in the first quarter, the first 15. Both offenses can move the football. It is 10-7 Winnipeg. Friday night football on TNC, and of course in the scoreboard through one quarter here in Hamilton. I would point to the seven points, Dwayne, for the Tie Cats, though, and a very important response, I would think, the way the Bombers are rolling right now. Yeah, certainly. These two teams watching each other over the course of the last week, watching the film, watching each other's games, and seeing the offenses are rolling for both of these teams. And we've talked a lot about the, the matchup, the history between these two veteran quarterbacks that they want their units to match each other sort of shot for shot in this ball game, And it's played out that way thus far. Great mutual respect between veterans Boley by Mitchell and Zach Kolaris. A matchup history that goes back a full decade. Great Cup 2014 when Kolaris was the quarterback here in Hamilton and Mitchell of course was with Calgary on the toss left. That's James Butler and he is greeted there by their new middle linebacker Tony Jones uh, filling in admirably for Adam Big Hill who's been injured. A slow start for the Tie Cats and a big game at BC Place, but what a recovery. 29 for 30 and the bounce back, they were down as many as 16 points. Came back and won that one in overtime. Yeah, a little bit of a slow start, but Bo absolutely found his way in that football game. He's on that second down, caught Tim White across midfield. First down, Hamilton. You know, it looked a little rocky at the start of the year, but you know, you look at the history of Scott Milanovic and some successful veteran quarterbacks later in their career, Anthony Calvillo in Montreal, Ricky Ray in Toronto. Things have played out pretty well, and again, not the smoothest start necessarily this season, but Bo has played his way from the bench right into the MOP conversation. He got benched in Montreal. The next week, Taylor Powell started. He got hurt. And Mitchell got another chance. And he's been great ever since. Play action fake. Deep ball. Down the right. Oh! Right in the hands of Tim White. In behind Brandon Alexander. Could have been a touchdown for the Ticats. Yeah, you're going to see Tim White pop into the screen, fake to the middle, and head towards the corner. He's got some separation. Alexander chasing from the middle of the field. Bo drops it in there. He's pointing to me. But Tim White just unable to haul it in. Cats leading receiver. Who would really come on this year after a slow start. One he wishes he had back there. So quickly to Keandre Smith inside the 50. Not enough for a first down. At least three, four yards shy. Third down coming up. Punting unit coming on. Uh, Tim White's biggest game of the year this season came against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Seven catch, 134 yard effort. And looking to duplicate that 
Had a big opportunity right there for a big play. Remember, we talked about that margin of error. You don't want to miss opportunities against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Constantino's kick goes out of bounds. And see where they spot this one here. Right at the 14, as long as it's inside the 15. And no penalty. That close for Tim White. Instead, it's still a medium that's been around for 10 years now, but honoring the greats of the past. And at halftime, two more names will go up there. These two, Mike Walker, just an outstanding defensive lineman back in the 80s with Hamilton, and the late Bernie Custis, the first black quarterback in modern-day Canadian pro football, whose contribution goes well beyond his playing days, but in coaching junior and university football and just a fixture here in the Hamilton community until his death in 2017. Yeah, and the community and, and always really a part of the Tiger Cat organization in some way. Well, see the name Bernie Custis on the, the wall of honor here and just across Cannon Street, right across the street from the stadium is Bernie Custis Secondary School, which opened in 2019. Yeah, and I know that Many of Bernie's former players were part of the process to make sure that his name went up on that school. Long career as an educator in the Hamilton area after his playing days. And as for Mike Walker, also a Canadian Football Hall of Famer, great member of the 1986 Grey Cup champions. Here's a deep look. Kolaros, a bit far for Dembski. And it was Katzentona's giving chase, but oh, they... Certainly hooked up last week in Winnipeg on the opening drive, a 40-yarder right in the end zone, and he got clear in behind coverage. Nick Dembski for that touchdown to get two in the night. Yeah, much as they've done tonight, pretty balanced attack for Winnipeg last week that really seemed to keep the Edmonton defense off balance. They didn't know what they were going to get on any given play. Winnipeg was able to set up a couple of big shots, that one to Dembski, another one later. To Carrick Wheat fall down the right side for a touchdown. So the Tie Cats have managed to flip the field at least, trailing by three. Lawrence Woods off the hop at the 40. Punt of 51 yards. He gets up to the Tie Cat 50 for Bo Levi Mitchell to come back on. And one scoring drive, a run by James Butler for the touchdown. Last nine great cups, eight times has been at least. A start by Zach Caleros or Bully by Mitchell. Let's get more from Matthew. Great stat, Rod. But let me take you back to October 2019 when Zach Caleros, after returning twice in that season, was having dinner before they faced the Calgary Stampeders in his first game as a Blue Bomber. He was having dinner with Bully by Mitchell and their mutual agent, Dan Vertlieb. And at the time, Caleros wasn't in a very high confidence place. And Bo Levi Mitchell went up to him and said, you're the guy, don't forget that. And Caleros appreciated that because Mitchell wasn't weird about it. He was actually encouraging. And to continue the story, when Caleros threw that memorable touchdown pass to Darvin Adams in that game and Winnipeg won on the sideline, Bo Levi Mitchell said he was so happy for Caleros in that moment. You talked about it, the deep respect these two guys have. We could talk about their two MOPs, their two great cups. But the one thing Bo Levi Mitchell said about tonight, I want, I want us both to throw and keep throwing because I respect a guy like Zach. Rob. Well, Matthew, I remember that play in his first start with Winnipeg and they ended up beating Calgary that night. They ended up beating Calgary in the playoffs as well. But yeah, you could really sense the admiration as you talked about from Bo Levi Mitchell and at a time when we didn't know if Zach Calero's career was going to go on much longer. Has it ever? Bo Levi Mitchell now with Hamilton and trying to keep the Tie Cats in this with four straight wins but throwing that one away and a third and four coming up yeah, and you know it's a throwaway but it's not a small thing when we talk about how Bo Levi Mitchell's season has gone just in the decision making process Scott Milanovic talks about he made some bad decisions early in the year on some throws that's what led to him being benched that at times we saw a couple of games in a row where in very similar situations instead of throwing it away protecting the field position, whether to punt or kick a field goal, live to fight another down, whatever. He tried to force passes across the middle. They got intercepted. That's part of the, the growth of Paul Levi Mitchell this year is making that decision. Off the punt by Constantino. Hangs up and losing the handle for a moment. Fortunate to have that. That's Noah Halleck. And does 
of a handle on the ball. It's hard to believe it's been almost 10 years since back then. Young star QB Zach Kolaris a Hamilton Boldy by Mitchell of the Calgary Stampeders squared off in that 2014 Grey Cup ultimately won by the Stampeders but it was a very close game. Yeah it sure was. Hamilton fans may want to look away as uh, they recall the ending of that one the heartbreak of that game. That yeah. was that was Brandon Banks at a punt return touchdown that would have put them up in the last minute but it was it was a penalty and they yeah. gained that big play and illegal block blocked from behind on that return memories of 10 years ago and here they are tonight and it's Polaris's bombers leading it Oliveira on the carry but a flag does come out after another good pickup by number 20 Brady Oliveira. Neat to think as we talk about these two quarterbacks. Holding Winnipeg, number 55, 10 yard penalty, remains first down. Uh, the two of them just thriving at this point in their careers, but the start, again, I've talked a couple times this year about the 2012 quarterback class. These two guys were part of it. They end up meeting in a great cup as backups in their first year go on to play against each other a couple years later and so many memorable matchups between the two over the years. You said it off the top, Rob, the two most successful quarterbacks of the last decade. First and 20 now after the holding penalty, nearly intercepted. Another chance for a pick. This time it was Destin Talbert coming in and a good break for the Bombers as Talbert can't hang on to that one. And a second and 20 coming up here for Winnipeg. Yeah, this one sails a little bit on Zach Kolaros. I think the receiver going up for the football may have just slightly distracted Talbert. Or even his own teammate, Jamal Peters, flashing across the screen there. Second and 20. Winnipeg 16, Bombers lead by three. Getting it to Dembski, 15, 20, and not close to a first down, but gets him a little bit more space as Jamison Sheehan will come on to punt it away. And another thought on 2012, and they were backup. Zach Kolaris, the Argos then, and Boley by Mitchell got in and threw a touchdown pass in that game, but remember the, the coaches, on that team we've talked a lot about yeah. 2012 with the Argos especially it was John Huffnagel at Calgary but it was Scott Milanovic and Mike O'Shea was on that Argos staff yes. as well. Yeah you think about the all that has gone on since 2012 with members of that coaching staff O'Shea winning a couple of Grey Cups Chris Jones wins a Grey Cup in Edmonton Jason Moss wins a Grey Cup in Montreal 50 yard punt Lawrence Woods on the return to shy of his 40. Mitchell coming right back on as the bomber offense stalls. What's turning out to be a very nice night on the Hammer Friday Night Football. Hamilton, Rod Smith, Wayne Ford, Matthew Shinetti for the second meeting of the season between the Bombers and the Ticats. Hamilton has not lost a game since Winnipeg beat them dramatically in the final minute with a touchdown. Zach Kolaris to Kenny Lawler. Needing to beat the Bombers tonight. Slim playoff hope for Hamilton. James Butler. Who had a big hole to run through for his touchdown, but the holes have shrunk <laughs> since then. <laughs> yes. Big holes defensively are not a common occurrence Nick, Nick, for Jordan Nick, Younger's Nick, Winnipeg Nick, Blue Bombers. You had him dead to right. Longtime CFL defensive back, great corner. Student of the game. Now applying his trade as the Bombers DC. Second and seven. It is complete. DeAndre Smith has been the top receiver for the Ticats on this night. And Brian Cole coming in and with Smith already down. So wrestling away as Smith gets up. And we'll take a look at the, the tail end of this play. Hey, the, the ball come out a little bit. What? Yeah, Cole, Cole saw lo the loose football. Hey, move, move. Hey, hey. Mario, Mario, Mario. 
Yeah, Keandre Smith didn't seem too bothered at the bottom of the pile. He knew exactly why Cole was reaching in there. The shy midfield now on a first and ten. Hamilton Tiger Cats, four receivers to the left. Mitch is looking that way. It is knocked away. Coming in, and if it's Winnipeg batting a pass down, there's a good chance number five is going to be involved. Well, how many times have we seen that, Rod? <laughs> Quite a few, more than any <laughs> other, I would say, in recent times. Willie Jefferson. That six foot seven inch frame. It's the massive wingspan put to work here. Well played by Willie Jefferson, second and ten. Pressure coming in, Celeste and Hama goes by. Mitchell, deep intercepted. Dietrich Nichols got back, looked for a moment like Keandre Smith had him, but Nichols with a brilliant pick. We got a turnover, and Winnipeg has the football deep in their zone, protecting that three-point lead. A terrific play here by Dietrich Nichols. You can see him over on the right side of your screen. Picks up the receiver. After that second move, just closes on the ball in the air. Dietrich Nichols just quietly goes about his business week after week. Absolute stud from the moment he set foot in this league. Remember, he and DeAndre Alford starting side by side as rookies for Winnipeg at short training camp coming out of the pandemic. I remember a play he made down at that end of the field too in 2021. Oliveira the run. You remember in that great cup against Hamilton, Jeremiah Masoli nearly had Jalen Acklin who was broken up by Dietrich yes. Nichols. And that forced Hamilton to kick a field goal just to push the game to overtime. The Cats had a chance to win it. Big defensive play by Nichols. Yeah. One of many over the years. These two teams meeting in recent years in the Grey Cup game in 2019. And then here, memorable for Winnipeg against the Tie Cats right here at Tim Hortons Field. Making it back to back Grey Cup victories. And they won in 2021. Polaris has time. Has a receiver, too. It's caught. And Katz and Tonus coming in hard, but Ontario Wilson hangs on, and it's a first down up near the 40 for Winnipeg. And I frankly love both sides of this play. The fearlessness of Ontario Wilson going across the middle, he knows. Katz and Tonus is coming. And the physicality here from Stavros Katz and Tonus. You know, channeling a little bit of Rob Hitchcock on Wall of Honor night here in Hamilton. The legendary tie cat safety, and the one that bore the brunt of it was Katz and Tonus' teammate. You saw on the other side, Jamal Peters is the injured Hamilton player. CFL All-Star from his time with the Toronto Argonauts, his first year with Hamilton. Yeah, he's been a great fit in that Tiger Cats defense, really solidifying that boundary corner spot for them. Leading the team in interceptions this year. Chris Jones will have to shuffle the deck here a little Unnecessary bit. Unnecessary roughness. Hamilton, number 30. 15-yard penalty, first down. So they penalize Katz and Tonus for that hit coming in. Yeah, and that, it's a fair call. So it's the initial it. contact was with the receiver's head. Let's take another look at Katz and Tonus coming in on Wilson. Katz and Tonus by no means a dirty player. Wilson on his way down. It's the right call. No question, but. Well, they got 18 on the catch, 15 more on the penalty, so net gain of 33 yards to put them squarely at midfield now. 
Scott Milanovic with his challenge flag in hand. The bigger concern right now for Hamilton, though, is the condition of Jamal Peters, who is still down. And Milanovic wants to discuss things, assuming he wants to discuss his options with Justin McInnes. Jamal Peters. It was like Wilson was sandwiched in between Katzentonis and Peters, but said Peters bore the brunt of it. So Scott Milanovic can't challenge the the penalty here, but was this a catch? Did he hang on? Can see at the end of the play, it does look like Wilson, and it pins the ball against the turf at the end. Did have his arm wrapped around it. It looked like the ball came out. The call in the previous play was an incomplete pass. We have a necessary roughness against Hamilton. We'll go up 15 yards and an automatic first down. So in essence 18 yards further back now after it's just the penalty yardage and not the the catch you saw that ball squirt out in Ontario Wilson but We're down to the 37 yard line of Winnipeg and you saw Peters get off the field and head into the medical tent bottom line of first and 10 now for Winnipeg 442 until halftime and a 10 7 lead. Seven straight victories for the Bombers coming in. Four straight victories for the Ticats coming in. Winnipeg has clinched a playoff spot. If they win tonight, they can clinch at the very least a home playoff day. Tolaris, another deep ball. Watch Kenny Lawler. And that's Destin Talbert in with him. Incomplete. Well, the Winnipeg lines Lawler up to the boundary side as the wide receiver. As Jamal Peters goes out of the game, Hamilton has to shuffle their secondary. So Jonathan Moxie moved from the strong side linebacker, the nickel or Sam linebacker spot, out to the boundary corner. Maurice, or sorry, Carthel Flowers Lloyd comes in in his spot at linebacker, but no surprise to see Winnipeg take a shot at the new guy on the corner right away with one of their go-to guys, Kenny Lawler. Well, yeah, going after Moxie and not Talbert. Moxie standing in for Peters. A draw. Oliveira. Got a piece of him. Hendricks did, and he gets some help to Wilborn coming in on that second down. Not nearly enough, up to about the 40, and the Bombers will have to punt. A big play by the defensive tackle Dwayne Hendricks to get a piece of Brady Oliveira here. Fights off the block of Chris Kolonkowski. Doesn't bring him down, but stops his momentum enough to allow the linebacker Wilborn to come in and make the play. So Hamilton's defense standing up again. Good start by the Bomber offense, but things have certainly slowed down in a low driving punt from Jamison Sheehan, and it takes a great hop. And out of bounds, just inside the 15. Nice punt. Different as it was by Sheehan. Low and driving a 57-yarder. So, Ticat football, but starting deep in their zone with just over three minutes on the clock until halftime. A tremendous directional punt there from Sheehan on the play. You know, sometimes drive and kick, you worry about out-kicking your coverage, essentially not having the hang time allowing your guys to get there. But he knows he's aiming it out of bounds, wants to get it on the ground without letting the returner make a play on the ball. Great one punt. One of so many, Dwayne, from the Pro Kick Academy in Australia, as is Nick Constantinou, fellow punter in this game tonight. Several in the CFL. Play action take, and it's caught by Tim White. We saw earlier, the last time they had the ball, only by Mitchell went right back to Tim White after the drop he had that could have been a tie-cat touchdown earlier. 
top receiver in the Ticats with a catch there that gets them further up and a first down and the three minute warning is given. Close one and a big one. And performer for the Grey Cup. It is going to be great and Milt Stiegel. It's going to be the kickoff show by the way for the Sirius XM. Stiegel can you put an actual suit on? You said we were keeping them on, okay? No, that was a joke. <laughs> So, Kate got rid of the Boveralls, but Milt Stiegel has decided, until the Tie Cats lose again, that's it. Yep. That's, that's his garment of choice. He will be sleeping in the Boveralls. <laughs> <laughs> Even when they're playing Winnipeg, too. How about yep. that? Yeah. He, get, he might be hearing about it from um, Bomber Faithful there. Yeah, Butler. They may be changing the name of Milt Stiegel Drive. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, the paddle halftime coming up. And as, as Kate mentioned, uh, some news concerning the upcoming Grey Cup in Vancouver next month. Grey Cup next month? Where has this season gone? We are late. It's week 18 at 21. Second and eight now. Hamilton down three at the 40. Late the half. Four-man rush off the fingertips of Desmond Patman. Inserted into the lineup with the injury of rookie Shamar Bridges and can't hang on to that one. Yeah, a little shuffling of the receiving core for Hamilton with Bridges out. Patman, another big target, comes in. He's played a handful of games for the Ticats over the course of this season. He comes in playing primarily on the field side. Stephen Dunbar shifts over to Bridges' spot on the boundary side. An awful news about Shamar Bridges. Such a the top rookie receiver in yardage at 933 and out for the season with a quad injury. Oh, the Bombers got close there in Constantino. He did get rid of it, and that's Lucky Whitehead inside the Winnipeg 30. So lots of time on the clock for Polaris and that offense at 208. As after the quick start by both offenses, things have turned into a more of a defensive battle. This is game one of a Friday night football doubleheader. Jake Mayer, Nathan Rourke. The Calgary Stampeders only four wins, but mathematically still alive. They need a lot of help and they need to win. But BC, well, the Lions thought they had it against Hamilton. Had the big lead last week, but lost it in overtime. So an important one coming in the West as well. But BC tries to get closer to clinching a playoff spot. That's part two. Friday Night Football doubleheader here on TSN tonight. Yeah, the can't miss games continue down the stretch here in the CFL. Handing off Brady Oliveira on that first down, still shy of the 40. Winnipeg scored a touchdown on their second possession of the night. There's Carthel Flowers Lloyd. Initial CFL. Haven't drawn attention to that this year. We talked about him a lot last year on special teams. He was had a terrific year, led the Canadian Football League in special teams back. Yeah, his numbers down a little bit this year. He's seen a little more action on defense at times this season. Has made a little bit of a run of late in terms of his special teams numbers. Three man rush, they drop off. Pump fake Calaros by some time. Takes off, wants that first down and gets it up around the 45. The drive continues, 136 to go until halftime. A nice play there from Zach. Just a couple of pump fakes kind of holding off the defenders. Recognizing, as you said, with three man rush, nine people dropping off in coverage. Not much there to throw to, but a little bit of room underneath. As a result, the scramble for that first down. Forty-seven. And a first and ten. Deep luck down the right. Kenny Lawler in behind. Jonathan Moxie down inside the ten. First and goal, Winnipeg coming up. Once again, you see Lawler isolated on the boundary side. It's a wide receiver, Moxie in coverage. Little stem to the outside. Forces Moxie to take that one full step to the outside, and he's scrambling then to try to recover. Perfect pass from Kolaros. The hot streak for Kenny Lawler continues. 
They were really working their magic last week against the Elks. We did those eight catches, many of them so acrobatic. One-handers, just keeping the feet in for a touchdown. He had a couple of major scores in that game and a big one. The setup, Winnipeg, 1.14 to go until halftime here at Tim Hortons Field. First and goal at the Hamilton 8. Handing off, Brady Oliveira, 3-2-1. And all's well for the blue and gold. Ultimately, but that was close as Oliveira. I initially thought that a Hamilton defender had recovered that ball. You can see it's out before he crosses the line. Moxie had a Ruben shot at it. It's a touchdown. The previous play is under review by command center. So a few things to sort out now. The possession after the ball came loose, but he was hoping to break the plane before it went out. Yeah, it's, and it's actually close. But watch Newfeld down on the turf. Suck that ball in. He's buried. I don't think he could even see it. He just feels it and pulls it in. It squirts out of the reach of Jonathan Moxie. The, you know, the great irony of this play is that Pat Newfeld is quietly hoping that this is, in fact, ruled a fumble and not a Brady Oliveira touchdown. The every lineman's dream if it can go to the veteran Newfeld here. I still do wonder, though, if it would be a moot point when they look back to where the ball came down, Dwayne. It looked awfully close to breaking the plane. Yeah, it, it did look as if the ball popped out as Oliveira's arm reaching back hit the goal line. So is it a touchdown? They've taken a look at it. Does Patrick Newfeld get six points? After review, the ruling on the field has been overturned. The player was down by contact at the one yard line. It'll be second down. So Winnipeg football. Poor Patrick Newfeld though, that close. He does not get the touchdown. It was not a fumble. They rule Oliveira's down, so they'll scrimmage at the one. It's a second and goal coming up here for Winnipeg. And once again, it looked to me as if where Oliveira was down, the ball was breaking the plane, but apparently not. So another crack here for the Bombers. With Terry Wilson in at quarterback. He keeps it. He pushes. Did he break the plane? Get pushed back in second burst. He does get it. So there's your Winnipeg touchdown. 47 seconds to go until halftime. At first they had him, but he was still on his feet, and Terry Wilson has his first CFL touchdown. Well, Bomber rookies. Looking after much of the scoring load here tonight. And there you see the second effort from Terry Wilson gets him in. Five plays, 76 yards, much of that real estate covered on the 55-yard catch for Kenny Lawler to set him up close. It's Terry Wilson gets Patrick Newfeld's touchdown. <laughs> The point after from Castillo. So they scored early in the half, they scored late in the half, and it's a 10 point game. Winnipeg leading Hamilton under a minute to go. And yeah, Kenny Lawler certainly sing his praises for what he did last week and the biggest offensive play for the Bombers in this night. Yeah, strike. They get him isolated against Moxie moving from the nickel spot out to the corner. For Kenny Lawler, he's just picking up where he left off last week against Edmonton. Eight catch, 130 yard effort. Most of that coming in the second half. There's one of his two touchdowns on the night. 
I'm starting to rethink which one impressed me more now. I was <laughs> yeah. all along with the one-handers. Zach Kolaris, Mike O'Shea, they were both saying just memorized by that one-handed grab. But yeah. this, the, the, the wherewithal to keep that foot down on that touchdown was amazing. Well, and you think about how many times over the course of his career Kenny Lawler has made these kind of plays. Yeah. So like last week against the BC Lions, the Ticats in a hole, heading to halftime. And Lawrence Woods took a pop, bringing that one out. 41 seconds to go. We'll see if they can get it close enough for Mark Leggio. Yeah, Leggio's got a long of 55 on the year. That was with the wind at his back. Once again, not much wind here tonight, but would be big for Hamilton as they'll get the ball to start the second half. So if they were able to at least get a field goal here, knowing their offense is going to have another chance right away, it would be big. Well, they've been in this situation a few times, looking to quickly drive down to field goal range. Mitchell, that's caught. Brendan O'Leary Orange. Bang, first down there in field goal range and more. He's still going. 10, 5, taken down about the three by Michael Griffin, who saved a touchdown. Brendan O'Leary Orange, who spent three years in Winnipeg, drafted by the Bombers, won a great cup with them, has just made a huge play for Hamilton. Yeah, a little double move on the in route there by O'Leary Orange, and then phenomenal job after the catch Michael Griffin tries to punch it out O'Leary Orange does a nice job protecting the rock you can see Bo Levi Mitchell from the start of that play was not thinking field goal Butler Willie Jefferson trying to rip the ball out too and Taiwan garbage Jake Thomas are there but Nothing doing for Butler that time. Timeout, Hamilton. And the Winnipeg defense all over James Butler on this one. From the get go, Willie Jefferson beats his block at the point of attack and waits for the cavalry to come in. Eight seconds. Got to be mindful of that. They're close to second and goal, but got to watch that clock. And Mitchell wants a touchdown, but depending on what happens here, be an interesting decision afterwards, especially with the ball back at the seven. You'd have to think they can't get anything on this down that we will see Leggio. To get something to show for it. But think it end zone now. Mitchell. Clock ticking. End zone. Caught. Ball comes out as White goes down. He got hit. He went down. Griffin picks it up and takes a knee in the end zone. I'm not sure this is going to be a completion. The previous play is being automatically reviewed by Command Center. Tim White just gets blasted as soon as the ball comes in. How about this play by Retta Cramdy? To jar that ball free. Well, now, is the ball out before he hits the ground? Well, that's a question. And also, look at where they, it lands. This is similar to the discussion yeah. about Oliveira. Does it Tim land? White still has the, the ball in his hands, and the ball touches the front plane, the front edge of the goal line. So this will be an interesting review with one second to go until halftime. First of all, is it a catch by Tim White? And if it is, can that be ruled a fumble? Here's the decision. After review, the play has been overturned to an incomplete pass. 
It'll be third down with three seconds left in the first half. I feel like there's consistency between these two calls. I'm not necessarily sold on the interpretation. Right. But there's consistency in that, quite honestly, is what coaches and players want. So ruling that he didn't hang on long enough after he took the hit to have it ruled as a catch. So Legio does come on. They had every reason to think they were going to pick up a touchdown on this very quick and stunning drive, but at least they do get some points on the board at halftime as we get down to zeros and it's back to a one possession game. Interesting first half in terms of Ticats responses again after a bomber touchdown, but they'll lament some missed chances they've had to find the end zone. Winnipeg. Some first timers is getting CFL touchdowns, including the rookie Kevin Clercius. Yeah, up at the top left of your screen, Clercius going deep. A little bit of a mix up in the Hamilton secondary in terms of their initial alignment. Leaves Will Sunderland chasing Kevin Clercius. So that late drive, even though it ended up being a field goal, Dwayne Ford, at least showing again that Hamilton can move the ball against this defense. Yeah, they've picked their spots, hit a couple of strikes. You think about the missed opportunities for Hamilton in the first half of this ball game. Deep shot to Tim White that likely goes for a touchdown if he's able to hold on to it. A couple of decent looks at potential interceptions as well. And couldn't cash in after that big play to O'Leary Orange with a touchdown. They got close. It's Jonathan Moxie on the return. So Hamilton's ball to start the second half. Mitchell coming out. And this is a sample of what Mitchell did in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, Bo Levi Mitchell. Keandre Smith hooked up a couple of times in the early going. And this one to kind of spark the offense. Tim White is always DC. closing in on a thousand Second yards on the season. And of course, the big late strike to O'Leary Orange to set up that field goal. So here's Mitchell. Second half. They nearly got him. Willie Jefferson got his hands on him. Get a grab though, and he ends up completing it to Butler. Gets it across the 35, and making something out of what looked to be nothing, as it looked like Willie Jefferson was going to get a sack on Mitchell there. Yeah, Jefferson coming from the left side, offensive left. Looks like he's got a shot at Bo, but Bo able to just duck under Willie on that one to stay alive. Nice job there by Butler as well to make the first tackler miss. He picks up five, second and five at the 37. It is caught again, a short one. Furthest advancement by Keandre Smith up around the 41. It'll be a third down, very, very close. About a yard, less than a yard away. Scott Milanovic, Ticat started the season at 0-5. And they were two and nine at one point. They've won four games in a row. Things gradually turning around. The question, though, with these all these just about do or die games, is it too late for Hamilton? They got to keep winning. Mandy Litre in short yardage, third and one. Litre keeps it. He should have it. Tanner Ken Wallet and Brian Poole there to push him back, but it looks like he had to get it to the 42 and a first down for Hamilton. Tray here. It's a good push from his left side. Tight end Javon Robinson over there. Good surge as well by the backup offensive lineman in to help out in short yardage. Nate Dumoulin Duguay. Butler, lots of time, up to the right, coming back to it for White. Now in front of him was Reddick Cramdy, who was at the very least a distraction. I don't know if he actually got a piece of that football coming in, because it was heading towards White, incomplete. Well, just a reminder of what a long throw this is out to the wide side of the field. 
and the time that that allows for defenders to close the gap on Tim White making a play on that ball. Cramdy and Terrell Ford. So it's a second and ten. Ticats at their 44, down seven. Start of the second half. And that one is over Stephen Dunbar. He still does not have a catch tonight. Incomplete. That one went high. And Constantino will come on to punt it away. Mike O'Shea in his 10th season as the head coach of Winnipeg Blue Bombers and with their victory last week clinching a playoff spot for the eighth straight year with their eyes now on finishing first in the West and getting that bye to the Western final. Lucky Whitehead with it after a punt of 47 yards up close to the 30. Whitehead with a short return. Back at Tim Hortons Field, Matthew Shinetti will have a special guest coming up on Friday Night Football, part one of our doubleheader. Two-time Canadian Country Music Award winner who will be headlining the Sirius XM kickoff show for the Grey Cup in Vancouver. Saying all that, you've had a crazy year, especially with your hit Old Dirt Road. How did it feel knowing that you're going to open Grey Cup Sunday? That was like one of the coolest calls of the whole year. I'm so excited. Uh, I love Vancouver. Uh, can't wait to play in BC place. That's insane. Um, man, I'm just so excited. I'm, I'm very grateful to get to do this. Can you give us a taste of what we can expect? Um, a lot of, I mean, I'm from the middle of nowhere, a little town called Mild May, and I like to bring a little piece of my hometown everywhere with me, so I feel like you can expect some of that, um, and I'll leave the rest to your imagination. You going to enjoy some of the Great Cup parties with us as well? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there all weekend. We're, we'll be there from Thursday to Sunday, so yeah, it's going to be uh, a full weekend of festivities. I'm excited. We appreciate this. Can't wait. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. Owen Wrigley. And the Grey Cup coming up. Grey Cup 111 in Vancouver, just six weeks away. Getting closer, hard to believe. Well, we're into October and still so much to be decided before. That man is part of the Grey Cup festivities. Who will be there? Seems just so wide open. And there's Brady Oliveira. Speaking of wide open, working his way through another hole to get it up around the 50 and a first down here for the Blue Bombers. Left side of that offensive line. The youngster Dobson, the veteran Brian. Just paving the way for Brady Oliveira to do his thing. Who has 12 rushes for 75 yards. Oliveira just keeps on going after a great game last week and the week before in the Winnipeg 49. And a seven point lead. Little toss to Dembski. And he goes left. Gets across midfield. He gets it down closer to the 50 of the Ticats. I'm well, mentioning that Grey Cup 111 and all the festivities leading up to it. You know, always a highlight the CFL Awards. By the way, sold out that gala dinner in Vancouver Thursday and Friday. And the Twisted Tea Grey Cup halftime show. The Jonas Brothers to perform at BC Place. First Grey Cup to be played in Vancouver in 10 years. 2014. There's Owen, as mentioned before, the quarterback matchup back then 10 years ago, the last one of BC Place. Zach Kalaras versus Bo Levi Mitchell. That's Terry Wilson giving Kalaras a break and short yardage. So Zach goes back. Yeah, he started with the Argos, went to the Ticats. He had some. Some great years here, ultimately heading off to Saskatchewan, and then real career uncertainty for Caleros because of injuries. And everything changed when the Argos traded his rights, traded him to Winnipeg late in 2019. And they went on to win the Grey Cup, and again in 21, and went back again in 22, and last year as well. Four straight Grey Cup appearances. Let's not forget the great left tackle, Stanley Bryant, who before his time winning a great cup with Zach Calaris won one with Bo Levi Mitchell. Here's what Bryant had to say about that comparison. Well, I only have 
one real season with Bo. One, two. So I'll go with Zach. I mean, still love Bo. I mean, he did um, get me to a great cup and won a great cup in Calgary. But um, I have more experience and time, spent more time with Zach. So, I mean, and we're still at it right now. So. Now, the question was, who's your favorite quarterback? It wasn't who's better, <laughs> just Stanley's favorite. And Stanley's had success with both, and they've both had success with Stanley Bryant, one of the, the best ever. And what he does, that left tackle for Winnipeg. Polaris on the run, and he just has to get rid of him on that second and eight. He had no other options. There's a future Hall of Famer. You know, his name's going to be back here in Hamilton someday, Stanley Bryant. Yeah, no, no question at all about that Stanley Bryant just a, a tremendous career I, I think when you look at the fact that Winnipeg has become this flagship franchise yeah. during Stanley Bryant's time here much like Calgary was during Stanley Bryant's time there you know talk about culture and adding the right kind of people to your organization Stanley Bryant definitely one of those guys Shannon coming in that's nearly blocked Ticats had some heat on there, and a 37 yard punt. And Lawrence Woods took it at the 10, and he does manage to get up near the 20, but it was close. Ticats on special teams. Jamison Sheehan got it away. Daniel Bell coming in nearly had himself a block punt. Added to the wall of honor at Tim Hortons Field, the late Bernie Custis, and Mike Walker as well. Yeah, great evening. You see the loved ones of. Bernie Custis there, Mike Walker, and some of his former teammates, other members of Hamilton's Wall of Honor down there. Great celebration as they were inducted at a dinner last night in Hamilton. And honored here in front of the crowd today as they see their names go up on the wall. A couple of outstanding players, but for anyone who's met Mike Walker and Bernie Custis, even better people. Bernie Custis, not only player with the Thai Cats, but later coaching in Southern Ontario and junior coach of the McMaster, yeah, was once university coach of the year in the country. And Mike Walker, part of a dominant defensive line, along with his friend Grover Covington. And Matt Dunnigan can relate to this. I've talked to Matt many times about this Grey Cup 1986 and just how good that Thai Cat defensive line was. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they gave Matt a hard time. Yep. That day, as they did many quarterbacks, there was Hamilton's own version of the steel curtain. Mike Walker, in the middle of all the action, one of the all-time greats, 2021 Canadian Football Hall of Fame class. Do I have this right that he and Grover Covington one year combined for 39 sacks? Yeah. Yeah, I believe Mike Walker had 21 of those as a defensive tackle. So the penalty against the Thai Cats, pushing them back to a second down and long now, the unnecessary roughness call. But yeah, his teammate Grover Covington, the all time sacks leader in the history of the CFL, but he was no slouch either. 15th <laughs> all time. Yeah. 95 and a half sacks. Yeah, just remarkable, remarkable career, Washington State product. You know, Mike told the story of the, the NFL overlooking him because he had had an injury and had a couple of screws in his ankle that scared off the NFL. So he had an opportunity to come and play up here. And quite frankly, the NFL's loss was the CFL and particularly the Hamilton Tiger Cats gain as he went on to just a tremendous career here and spent a number of years coaching in the league as well after his playing days. He ended his playing career with Edmonton. Went to the Grey Cup four times with Hamilton, 84, 85, winning in 86. And again, that legendary Grey Cup against Saskatchewan, won by the Riders in a last second field goal. But that was in 1989, and that was Mike Walker's final game as a member of the Hamilton Tiger Cats back in 89 in that Grey Cup game. Second and 19. Tiger Cats push back to their 11 now. Pull down a touchdown midway through this third quarter. Three man rush with time coming back to the ball. It's just a little short. Right down at the 23 yard line. Bernie Custis. 
a running back. He started as a quarterback in 51 and then was later a running back as well with the Ticats. Yeah, and a, an all star at both positions. Tremendous player, former star with Syracuse. Went on to help a number of Canadians, including Tony Gabriel, get connected with that Syracuse program during his coaching days. Booming punt by Constantino. Lucky White has chased back inside the 25. After a 65 yard punt by Nick Constantino, back across the 35 for the Bombers. The newest additions, legends, Bernie Custis, Mike Walker will be back. Had to be taken to a hospital. But the one thing that Brian said is it allowed me to now listen to my body. Remember, he's getting up there in age. It doesn't seem like it when he plays. But the one thing he was telling me before the game is I'm just understanding my body and trying to listen to it now because in those moments, you really understand what's important. Football matters, and so does my health. Yeah. Absolutely, Matthew. And remember that game and putting a scare in everyone. Glad to see that Stanley Bryant was okay and it was just a heat. And Mike O'Shea, we asked him about Stanley Bryant and <laughs> she summed it up this way that, you know, it's been said that he is arguably the greatest offensive tackle in CFL history. Remove the word arguably. No more argument about that for his head coach. And the, the resume of Stanley Bryant would support that statement having. Done some things that no lineman has done before. And the longevity, the consistency at a high level, doing it for a couple different organizations. Second and three. And Oliveira should have that in the first down. First down. Stanley told us this week about going through his first training camp in Calgary. He arrived late for camp. Camp had already started and wasn't on the roster to start the year. He said he thought about going home and moving on, doing something other than playing football. But he said his sister and his mother talked him into talked him into staying, and probably the best advice he's ever ever gotten, or at least ever followed. I, I, I'm sure the Stampeders at the time, and later the Bombers, are very thankful. And any CFL fan, Stanley Bryant's day. There's Kenny Lawler, another good pickup on first down. He had a big play. Big catch, 55 yarder to set up a touchdown for the Bombers in the first half. It'll be a second and short coming up. And I asked Zach Kolaris, you know, talking about Bo Levi Mitchell, that I didn't want to bring up the memory of 2014. You know, a tough memory for Kolaris when he was with Hamilton and that loss to the Stampeders. And he said, no, it's okay, you can bring it up. Stanley brings it up all the time. <laughs> yeah. Of course, St Stanley with Calgary at the time. And, and those two are close now. And, that they appreciate each other's great sense of humor. Second and three, Polaris. Oliveira first down and more. Flag is out. And in behind Stanley Bryant, but see what the penalty is now on a big first down by Winnipeg. There's no infraction on the play. Number 65 checked in. First down. Keep an eye on Big Stanley Bryant, number 66. Just drives the defensive end, Tim Ward, down to the inside. Just making life a little easier for his running back. That running back is now over 100 yards. Brady Oliveira doing that again with the help of that old line and Stanley. 104 yards now, 15 carries for Brady Oliveira. Having another night. It's not over yet. He's still going. Broke a few tackles, broke through on the right side. And near another first down on the ground for Winnipeg. Another second and short coming up. And you get into the second half of this ball game, and I think you're starting to see some of the physical effects that the Winnipeg run game is having on the Hamilton front, wearing them down a little bit here. Brady Oliveira starting to pile up the yardage. So Terry Wilson comes back in on the second down and short. Well into the Ticat zone now. Scoring position again. Up by seven and Wilson pushes through left side. Easily enough for another bomber first down. Quarterback sneak and 
When in doubt, follow Stanley. Oh, always good advice. Chris Jones, marked influence on this Hamilton team since he joined the Thai Cats and his friend Scott Milanovic. They go way back to the Montreal days. Part of the improvement in a four game winning streak, but being tested right now at the 24. Faking to Oliveira, dumping it off to Dembski. Makes a move back inside with Destin Talbert, wrapping him, but not until he gets another first down by the looks of things. Close to the Hamilton 10. Yeah, driving down the field with handoffs to Oliveira, so you know the defense is going to bite hard on that run fake and create a little bit of time for Zach, space for the receivers. Nice quick hitter there to move the sticks. Bombers pressing again. The Thai Cats have responded well after Winnipeg touchdowns. One for a touchdown of their own, and another one they got awfully close late in the first half, settled for a field goal. Oliveira, nice move at the line of scrimmage, and he puts his head down and gets inside the five. Well, we talk all the time about the the effectiveness of Brady Oliveira as a downhill runner, but watch a couple of terrific lateral cuts, one right there and then there. This terrific job of making people miss by Brady Oliveira. Now they have a second and three, and they're at the Hamilton four. It's possible to get the first down without getting the touchdown, but awfully close here. Two receivers in motion. Oliveira can walk it in. Been a touchdown machine the last few weeks as he gets his fourth in three games. Brady Oliveira having another great night. And Winnipeg now is a two touchdown lead. Highland it up. He's going to take this one, bend it back to the right. Saw the boys in the middle of the offensive line that time. Is, is the chicken box over? Is it done? And they may just save that for home games. Okay, that's just, or is it just a, a passing fad? I mean, he <laughs> did, he broke it out against the Edmonton Elks. That was in Edmonton, and he had a couple. And then back last week against the Elks. A point after Castillo, and a 14-point lead. Winnipeg opening it up, looking to extend their winning streak to eight, and get that the offensive line. Double team on the nose. You'll see Patrick Newfeld kicks his man out. Brady Oliveira allowed to bend this back. Nice job just with the motion. Nick Dembski pulls a couple of linebackers out of the box. You see them starting to flow with that motion from Dembski. Great cutback lane right there for Brady Oliveira. Could walk that one in for another touchdown. He had one last week against the Elks. Receiving. And he had a couple of his first two of the season two weeks ago in Edmonton. Lawrence Woods on the return. Finds some room. 35, 40. Gets around. Still going. Out of bounds near midfield, but a flag comes out back at the Ticat 40. And is this coming back? A good burst there from Lawrence Woods trying to give. Tie Cats a little spark, but it looks like this is going to be against the home team. Holding Hamilton, number 29. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Yes, it is against Hamilton. A reminder, Cray presents a rare behind-the-scenes look at one of professional hockey's most iconic franchises, the rebuild inside the Montreal Canadiens. Stream now on Crave, presented by Bell. NHL season upon us as well. Great time of year in sports in October. The CFL is getting closer to playoff time. This is week 18 of 21. The Ticats trying to hang on to playoff hopes. They've been like this for the past month. 
They've won four straight games, but it's tough right now. Down 14, late third. The fake intercepted Tony Jones. Incomplete. It looked like Jones had it. The stunned silence here. Been filling in admirably for Adam Big Hill. Another look at how close it was to a pick. Yeah, and I think that the offensive and defensive lines right in front of Bo Levi Mitchell obscured his vision. Someone just flashing in front of Tony Jones. He didn't see the linebacker there as he's trying to throw it to that receiver in what he thought was a hole. The second and ten. That was a close call for Hamilton. And coming across is Nichols again on Dunbar. Nichols having a very solid night as well. And two well defended plays by Winnipeg on those Mitchell passes. And it's a third down and 10 coming up. Well, we've talked about it before with that combination. Brendan Alexander at safety and the two halfbacks. Dietrich Nichols on the boundary side. Evan Holm on the field side. And how. Just the reliability of those guys and the communication from those Hamilton guys. Hamilton is challenging the previous play for pass interference. Play will be reviewed. Has allowed the two young corners, Ford and Bonds, to really thrive in their first year as starters. But also, it's not just about the communication, but just tremendous players as well. We'll take a look here and see if Nichols was in a little early on the throw. Thought it looked pretty good from that angle. Early in the season, command center would break everything down in slow motion, and if there was any way of calling it, they usually would if he was arriving first. But they've softened their stance on PI calls on these challenges now. Looking at back at it live speed, Nichols. Got a hand in front and knocked it away. And just keep an eye on the the right arm of Nichols here. That's the only thing that to me could be in question. Is whether that right arm that looks like it's sort of behind Stephen Dunbar is considered a factor at all in the play. The call was no penalty, no pass interference. So, was that enough for the command center to overturn? After review, the ruling on the field stands. It'll be third down. Hamilton is charged a timeout. That is their second timeout and cannot call a timeout for the rest of the game. And that has really been fitting the pattern of. PI reviews in the second half of the season where we see now with the command center it has to be pretty blatant on review. Yeah, and yeah, obviously that wasn't I thought a pretty good looking defensive play from a tremendous player. Constantino to Lucky Whitehead inside the 35, on the 52 yards. Whitehead getting it down to the 42 of the ball popping out after he went down, whistle dead. And that is it for quarter time. Winnipeg got a seven point lead heading into the third, and they have added to it. Seven more points for the Bombers. Brady Oliveira having a big hand in that. 14 point difference heading into the final 15. Last Winnipeg drive for the touchdown, 147 to 29. Yeah, and the rushing yards contributing to that discrepancy in time of possession as well. You think about how much Hamilton's defense has been on the field with the big boys for Winnipeg leaning on them for a lot of that time. Could be an interesting fourth quarter. Well, we've seen Hamilton's ability to make the big play, and they're getting to that point in the game where they're, I think they're going to need it down a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of Hamilton's success offensively has been when they've been able to pick their spots a little bit in terms of taking those, those deep shots as opposed to having to force them. As time becomes their their enemy a little bit here. 
you wonder how Win if Winnipeg's defense might be able to take advantage of Hamilton trying to force the ball deep, etc. A four-game winning streak, the last two. Very dramatic. Two weeks ago in Toronto, a back and forth game. They won in a walk off field goal. And then last week, coming back after being down 16 against BC and winning that one in overtime. So they can come back. But yeah, they got to get the ball back. And Winnipeg, as you talked about, has developed a knack in this game for hanging on to that ball for a while. Oliveira, the ball carrier, gets five more. Yeah, no surprise to see Winnipeg open the fourth quarter with a handoff to Brady Oliveira. A lot of ground and pound here in the fourth. Oliver up to 128 and 19 carries with a touchdown. We saw that in the third quarter. It's given them the two touchdown lead. Throwing now. Pump fake. Does come close to completing it to Lawler. It does fall incomplete. The third down coming up here. Brady Oliveira able to slip out of the backfield. First look there, but he's covered. As the linebacker widens, looks for Lawler coming into the middle. A pretty good coverage there from the Cats. An opportunity here to get that ball back quickly, which is critical for them. And this time, two returners back. The way Sheehan's been placing his punts, Tim White joining Lawrence Woods. And it is heading Woods' way. Outside the numbers, well placed punt again, but Woods does have a return after a 46 yarder by Jamison Sheehan. And it gets up across the tie cap 30. Foley by Mitchell. They have Hamilton ball at their 32. It's 24 10 Winnipeg. We're in the fourth quarter now for Bo Levi Mitchell. And needing to get. A drive put together here, but to take the snap from the center, David Beard, and fakes the handoff and steps up, and he can't find a receiver, and he ends up going down at the 35 with a flag coming out. Mental piece, flag on the leg. Hamilton, number 64, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Let's go down to Matthew. Well, it seems like a long time ago now, but on James Butler's touchdown open the game, it was David Beard rocking the baby because his wife, Vanessa, and he just welcomed their fourth child, Michael, just yesterday, as you can see. And he also walked in doing this as well, rocking the baby. Sure, Winnipeg's up 14, but that celebration, the Beard family is going to remember it, guys. Awesome, Matthew. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations to the Beard family. And David needs one more for a full O line. <laughs> he does. That one's out of bounds, though. And, uh, is it Zach that caught that? Here's David Beard. Started his career with the Edmonton Elks from University of Alberta. And over with the Thai Cats a couple of years ago. Pretty good run on old lineman from U of A, David Beard. Mark Cordy, Justin Lawrence, Carter O'Donnell down in the NFL. A lot of good old linemen. Swinging it out. Oh, DeAndre Smith, was he, was he faking the little, little pooch punt that the Alouettes had made famous to get a first down and a second and long? Yeah, like he looks was thinking like about it. it. Yeah, whether he was thinking about it for real or simply looking to freeze the defender. But yeah, if the play call was on, there just wasn't an opportunity given the spacing there to execute it. You see, he kind of shows it here. But with Hallett and Cramdy closing. Saw that a few times last year, Jesher and Antwi doing it with success for the Alouette. Some people up in arms, but no rule against it. Short punt. Whitehead drops it. 
coming in for it and the crowd cards out flowers Lloyd lucky Whitehead does have the ball but to that gets a 38 yard punt. And a reminder the second NFL international game is here. It's the New York Jets the Minnesota Vikings in London England and coverage will begin on Sunday 9:30 a.m. Eastern 6:30 a.m. Pacific. Now that is only on TSN Plus. Only on TSN Plus you said. Got to get TSN Plus. You're going to watch the Jets and the Vikings. The hell about Sam Darnold and the Vikings by the way. Minnesota's quite a story aren't they? Yeah. Uh, NFC North. Brady Oliveira. He's been quite a story tonight again. Quite a story the last several weeks for the CFL's leading rusher. Another good carry on first down. Another second and short coming up near midfield. Yeah, Brady already having cracked that thousand yard plateau for the third time in his career. Illegal low ball. Hamilton, number 23, 10-yard penalty, first down. Calling Richard Leonard on the legal low block. And Leonard is the one down getting attention from the training staff of the Ticats. As the blocker came at him, he goes low against a bigger manual. See right here, watch for 66, Stanley Bryant coming into the foreground. There. Leonard didn't go into his legs, he actually tried to duck under the block. You know, the rule is intended to be about not, basically not cutting guys' legs out when they're trying to block you. But, but I'm sure from the official's angle, it, that's what it looked like he was doing, but for us, obviously, having the benefit of slow motion, you can see. And Oliveira with that carry, the updated numbers for Brady Oliveira. 128 yards tonight, and 1,235, increasing his lead over second place, William Standback. Oliveira, three straight seasons. With a thousand or more yards. And looking to win the rushing title yet again. And he was slow out of the game in 2024. Several veteran bombers were. He was hurt. So it took him a while to rack up the numbers, but certainly is now. Midfield. And down to the 50 on that first down. And now from our statistician, John Russell, Brady Oliveira with that yardage, has a career high, a season high, excuse me, for Oliveira. That's more in his career in a single game, but he's he's had some big games, as mentioned, in the last few weeks, and that one, the highest total so far. And he's been looking to add to it. He's at 132 right now. A nice shout out to the Sultan of Stats, John Russell. Well done, Johnny. Second and six. Oliveira. Well, you got a 14 point lead, and you want to control the clock as you talked about. Yeah. Just give it to number 20 behind that offensive line. Well, I mean, they're getting positive yardage on every play, running the football, so it accomplishes all of their goals, right? Stay on the field, move the ball, move the clock. Run left near 66, Uncle Stanley. Yeah. As they've called him as well. Elder statesman of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And obviously low risk plays in terms of protecting the football. Well, it is a third down. He didn't quite get there, but it is about a foot Terry Wilson needs in for short yardage again. Wilson taking that rule that Chris Strebler had and doing it well tonight as the Bombers just keep moving and so does that clock under 10 minutes now Winnipeg with the two touchdown lead looking to win their eighth straight game after starting at two and six. Well, we got to see backup quarterback Terry Wilson. 
get a few snaps running the regular offense at the end of last week's game against Edmonton. Obviously, if he is going to be the number two guy going forward with Chris Strebler on the shelf, any experience they can get him down the stretch for a playoff bound team could be critical. Oliver again, they just keep pounding it. And wearing down that Hamilton defense that you talked about, heading down to nine minutes. If the Bombers do hang on and win, they're eighth straight, they would clinch at least a home playoff date. No worries in second place. Uh, they'd be guaranteed to finish ahead of BC. The only other part of the equation is Saskatchewan. If the Rough Riders do not win tomorrow against Edmonton, if Winnipeg wins tonight, that would wrap up first in the West for the fourth straight year for Winnipeg. So they couldn't clinch it tonight, but they could get a whole lot closer. Second and six, faking that. Toss to Dembski, looking deep into the end zone. Jonathan Moxie was there, and the flags come out. Lucky White had the intended receiver, Moxie, pleading his case, but clearly made contact in the end zone before the ball arrived. That you know, Moxie's there. He wasn't fooled by the play. I think you, you had a situation where... Pass Winter interference, Hamilton, number 27. Foul wasn't goal. Ball will be placed at the one-yard line. Automatic first down. Winnipeg with that run game. It's hoping they had lulled the Ticat defense to sleep a little bit and tried to take a deep strike here. Trying to argue that Whitehead was hanging on to well, him. I, him down. Yeah, I think he has a case based on where he was. He's it's Terry Wilson had a touchdown earlier, but didn't get in that time. On that first goal. Yeah, just quickly finishing that thought, I think that Lucky Whitehead probably helped sell that one a little bit. It, it did look like Moxie had kind of overrun the ball. Ball was thrown to the inside. The ruling on the field on the previous play is a touchdown. Well, they're going to take a look at it. Didn't see the signal initially. So not in but there, but he just still kept driving with his feet. Moving, and, and there he's across the plane. And there he's on top of Stanley. Yeah, I, and again, he's clearly I, broken the plane. You're right. Follow Stanley. <laughs> Always follow Stanley. A great look right down the line here as you see Wilson pushing, okay. still driving his feet. There we go. And there's the signal for the touchdown for Terry Wilson. Seven plays, 64 yards. And just over four minutes more taken off the clock. And Winnipeg is a big lead now. Wilson with two touchdowns on the night, his first two in his CFL career. And the chance against the officiating raining down here at Tim Hortons Field. Upset most recently at the P.I. call against Jonathan Moxie, but the point ever tried to make it a 21-point lead. Yes, the totally objective yeah. Hamilton fans. Sergio Castillo. 31 to 10, Winnipeg getting closer to eight straight. Couple of great veterans there. Zach and Stanley, little celebration. Daunting to say the very least for the Ticats, who have kind of live in that way all season long after starting 0-5. They gave themselves some hope with four straight wins to get up to six and nine. Come on, baby. The math just isn't kind if they can't come back and win this game and they're down 21 Lawrence Woods with it. Bottom line would be they wouldn't be eliminated mathematically from the East race or the possibility of a crossover but they'd have to win out and they every team that they're chasing pretty much would have to lose out yeah. if they can't win to Yeah they simply put would need a lot of help. Their margin for error becomes zero. You know Scott Milanovic has said they haven't talked about these games as must win, but obviously 
everybody knows what they are. They were trading them that way, understandably, right from back four weeks ago. Because they were two and nine. And Mitchell is taken down. They get to him. It's Celeste and Haba with it. He and Taiwan Garbutt were moving in. Did a couple of key additions have a last year and Garvin too to that Winnipeg defensive line. Yeah, and you're going to see both defensive ends supply some pressure here. Garbutt coming from the right just caught Bordner back on his heels a little bit. That forces Bo to step up. And when he steps up, Haba has an angle to, to get around Murray and get there. Throwing wide open Dunbar. Stephen Dunbar with his first catch of the night. And he gets it up for a first down across the 45. They'll put it down at the 48. And the Tie Cats fortunate on this that Stephen Dunbar was as open as he was. As you'll see, Bo doesn't really step into the throw as he's got a, an offensive lineman right in front of him. So didn't get everything on that ball. It took some time to get to, to Dunbar. From the 48 now, 6.25 on the clock. More pressure, Jake Thomas this time. The veteran, Canadian Thomas. And there from the inside to take Mitchell down. Sacked twice in this possession by Hamilton. Well, this is, I'll go back to the, the end of the first half and the talk of Hamilton wanting to keep this as a one possession game try to avoid getting into a situation where they can't really be selective where they have to be aggressive they have to take chances because you can see Winnipeg defensive line is just going to pin their ears back in these passing situations second 15 that's caught by Des Patman inserted in the lineup as mentioned with the injury the season ending injury to rookie Shamar Bridges so Patman with the catch and third down coming up. Obviously, under the circumstances, Hamilton keeping the offense on the field. Third and eight. They got to go. Down 21. Barely five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Four men rush. Mitchell intercepted. Terrell Ford adds to his total. That ties him for the CFL lead. That's his seventh interception of the season for Terrell Ford. And the Bombers take over with a 21 point lead. That kind of night for Hamilton and Bo Levi Mitchell. Take a look back at that last play. You'll see Stephen Dunbar looks to make his break. See and Terrell Ford run to the football. Looks like their feet get tangled up a little bit. Dunbar goes down, leaving Ford there to come up with INT number seven. Not going to give it to the kid in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders jersey, especially when Dad's here making the trip from Niagara Falls. Uh, Nice keepsake there for Dad. What a happy moment. And for the Ford family, too, this is Terrell's first start in Hamilton, the closest CFL city to uh, home in Niagara Falls. And remember, Trey, his twin brother, had a couple of starts here with Edmonton a couple of years ago and again last year and won both of those. So, you know, Robert Ford's been able to enjoy what his sons have been able to do in the Canadian Football League and enjoying the night for Terrell with his seventh interception of the season. Did you see the ball security? Oh yeah. yeah. See how He's not cover, giving that up. Cover the points. Yeah. Yeah. Fourth quarter late in the game. Ball security is critical. Yeah. That, that grin too. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That is not going away anytime soon. So. I'm not going to dwell on it. But I'm just going to say. It is well documented that I do not like the team nominee system for right. awards. Right. You look at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who only get to nominate one player for most outstanding Canadian. You've got Brady Oliveira, 
prohibitive favorite. Terrell Ford's tied for the lead lead in interception. You know, you've got Nick Dembski, a perennial contender. Greta Cramdy has been phenomenal this year as well. But they only and get, get one nominee. And you only get to pick one. Yeah. And, and Change the system. Yeah. And you certainly feel that way with MOPs as well. Well, just the awards the in awards, general, yeah. yeah. I, Which is an entirely different conversation, by the way, as, as well, about MOP nominees this year. But Winnipeg in hand, about to punt it away with Sheehan, but up by a score of 31 to 10 over Hamilton. The Tie Cats about to see their four game winning streak come to an end. And their playoff hopes go from slim to practically none. Not mathematically eliminated, but awfully close. Lawrence Woods on the return. And Taylor Powell in at quarterback for Hamilton. Hey, Kate, with the Thanksgiving coming up, it's a pretty good time for the Gravy Bowl. A little bit early, I suppose, but you know, we're done next week. We, we're talking turkey. BC Calgary coming up in that one. Taylor Powell in at quarterback. Bolivar Mitchell was getting some attention down at the Ticats bench, but Powell getting in now with his game out of hand and just two and a half minutes to go. And quite frankly, great to see Taylor Powell back in yeah. action after a scary injury moment for him against the Edmonton Elks here earlier in the season. That was during his first start, his one and only start after Bolivar Mitchell was benched. And that was, yeah, as you say, against Edmonton and getting some reps now. Got a lot of them last year as a rookie. Completes that one to Tim White, hit immediately by Dietrich Nichols. Look at the final numbers of Bo Levi Mitchell, who had been playing so well on this four game winning streak. It looks to be coming to an end tonight. 15 to 28 for 217, and picked off a couple of times, although he had some drops. It might have made this a different game. The big one, Tim White couldn't hang on to. It looked like it was going to be a touchdown, and they nearly had another touchdown late in the first half. Powell again, that Brendan O'Leary Orange. Big game, big catch, the win over BC last week, and a big play at the end of the first half to get them close to a touchdown in this game. And this somewhat prolific season for Bo Levi Mitchell. Speaks volumes about the Winnipeg defense that his two lowest yardage games, his two lowest completion percentage games, have both come against these Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Ultimately, Winnipeg's defense, especially over the last seven, eight weeks, have been doing it to every team. Well, you talked earlier about you know the system for choosing. Uh, the awards and and the nominees, but we've had this question. Everybody has really the kind of year it's been. Who would your most outstanding player be right now? So look at the leading candidates: Cody Vajardo, Tyrese Beverett, Bo Levi Mitchell um, on that list too. And who, who, you got a vote? I, I I don't get a vote. You don't get a vote. Oddly don't, enough, I you, don't get a vote. You, you don't want a vote right now. It's so it's so hard. Down. Mentioning, by the way, uh, playoff significance. Hamilton is neither mathematically eliminated in the East or in the crossover, but it is extremely low percentage now. They would need a whole lot of help. And and yeah, it was it was too deep a hole at an 0-5 start. Well, and a couple season. of tough tough outcomes that they did early in the season. Oh, against Saskatchewan Walk in off. week two, yeah. But Winnipeg with this win clinches a home playoff date at the very least and they're in the driver's seat the tackle there the ball comes out and Willie Jefferson looks like he has it after Taiwan Garbutt knocked it loose from Taylor Powell so another turnover as the bomber offense will come on to see if they can put this game to bed but mentioning the bombers well let's have another look at this and we'll talk about playoff possibilities here yeah watch Garbutt on the right side of your screen in pursuit Retracing his steps back to the line of scrimmage. Had a fumble recovery, returned for a touchdown himself last week. 
This time coming up with the forced fumble. Now and Willie J, the recovery. Willie Jefferson giving it to Jordan Younger, the Winnipeg defensive coordinator's first year as DC with the Bombers. The job that he's been doing in that defense, especially during this 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 run of eight straight games. After that slow start for Winnipeg, here's the veteran Willie Jefferson and take that JY. A terrific performance again for Jordan Younger's defense. But mentioning uh, so the Bombers with this win can do no worse than second place and depends what the riders do from here in but Winnipeg's in the driver's seat to clinch the West for the fourth straight year. One thing we can tell you though a team not playing tonight or this weekend the Ottawa Red Blacks who tried three times to clinch a playoff spot and lost all three. We can say that Ottawa has indeed with the outcome of this now just a minute away officially Ottawa has clinched their first playoff spot now Hamilton couldn't catch them. And um, that's the first time since 2018 when they went to the Grey Cup. Uh, so, I know the last few games haven't gone quite the way the Red Blacks would have wanted, but it caused for at least a little celebration in the nation's capital. First time in six years. And so we can say now three teams confirmed. Of course, Winnipeg did last week, Montreal had before that, and now Ottawa has clinched a playoff berth. But in terms of positioning, things are still up in the air. BC coming up against Calgary. And if the Lions lose to the Stampeders, well, Winnipeg will indeed wrap up. Or excuse me, they got Saskatchewan playing tomorrow, so still not. They've clinched the They've clinched the home playoff date regardless of what the Lions do. And i got to get this straightened out. I'm confused. Well, Rod, I'd like for you to outline all of the possible all the possibilities. playoff scenarios. If you could oh. just take a minute for the fans. <laughs> so let's see. If Saskatchewan, okay, yeah. And if they tie, which never, by the way, was considered a possibility the way it had gone in the CFL. It had been years, and we've had a couple of those this season. Johnny Augustine on and running back now for the Bombers. I'll simplify it this way. This outcome tonight, good for Winnipeg, bad for Hamilton. Yes, How about well that? said. Well summarized. The number eight, eight straight wins for Zach Kolaris' Winnipeg Blue Bombers. To think that they were two and six two months ago after an overtime loss in Toronto. Last play. Terry Wilson on to take a knee. But do not go anywhere. Part two of the double hitter is coming up. Winnipeg. Eight straight victories in charge in the West. You got BC.